Okay, guys, uh, I want to talk to you about our on-ramp scheduling. Uh, with the on-ramp scheduling, we'll be able to get clients in the door uh, with a good introduction about what class is about. So here's the protocol for that. Uh, basically, on-ramp scheduling, there's two types. You got one for our sports performance and one for our boot camp and CrossFit class. As indicated below, uh, key points of emphasis with this are there are two on-ramp semi-private uh, for the sports performance. So they get two on-ramp semi-privates in 30 days of sports performance spread out over a two-week period. It's very important that you know it's a two-week period because it allows us to shuffle more people through the door, uh, particularly doing two different sports performance on-ramps within that month. Uh, and then ideally, the biggest part of that is uh, it will help us increase our, our auto pay. If you get somebody coming in uh, say we did one sports performance and one boot camp on, on ramp per month. The problem with that is if somebody wants to come mid month, they're probably going to pay at the beginning of the next month to come into the on ramp system, which is bad business. So by splitting it into two week increments, uh, we can get more people helped and increase our auto pay. So again, sports performance has two per month. I'm sorry, two on ramps, two on ramp sessions that will be done in a two week period. Bootcamp and CrossFit have three on-ramp sessions that will be done in a two-week period, right? So uh, with the on-ramp, each class is unique, has a small group of uh, attendees. Uh, we'll, we'll go through different movements and exercises and, skilled, and skills that will be implemented in our program on a daily basis. So think about it as, uh, you know, uh, it's our first date and, you know, I'm just, I'm taking you to a nice dinner before we, you know, go have sex later. That's my acronym for that. Uh, athletes who miss class. So again, these are classes. Now, if you miss the classes, you either need to make up a class the next time it's offered in the next block, which is doable in a two week period type of situation. Or uh, for those that don't like groups, they can schedule their own personal training session. Ideally, we kind of want to get away from this, but there could be a situation where somebody does not like groups. Uh, on ramp for sports performance. We got the videos of how to actually book these. Nick did that. And then the standardized process video, that is what I'm literally doing right now. And I'll put it in this link. Uh, notes, two types of on-ramp. Sports performance uh, will receive two on-ramp semi-private sessions in 30 days of class. The price is $297, but when we bill it, it's actually $300. We include tax on that. Uh, block one on-ramps are consecutive Saturdays, 6th and the 13th. Block two are consecutive Saturdays on the second half of the month after the 15th, after mid-month, 20th and 27th. Block one is available for, you know, Saturday at nine, first Saturday of the month, second Saturday of the month is nine. Uh, so both nines. And then block two is the back half of the month, uh, the third and the fourth Saturdays of the month. Do note that some months have five weeks. If somebody wants to sign up on the fifth week or take an on-ramp on the fifth week, they need to wait until the first week of the next month, unless they are just super dependent on doing it now. Uh, now, let's go to B, boot camp or CrossFit class will receive three on-ramp sessions, semi-private, uh, 30 days and 30 days of class. The price for this is $297 for our CO package, but do note that we have a trial for $210 in our FEO package. So do note there's two ways you can come in on that. Block one, consecutive Saturdays. Block two is the same thing. Here's the schedule for the CrossFit on-ramp or CrossFit boot camp schedule. 7.30 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. Uh, with the boot camp or even with the kids, it needs to happen at a later time. Uh, we, or we have to have a later time availability. A lot of people work nine to five, so we have that kind of laid out. Third and fourth Saturday of the month is the same type of situation. Please note that on ramp three is coach's discretion, meaning that um, because of the way the months are set up, if we're trying to do two groups per month, you cannot do Monday, 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 because that would push back the other two. You'd have somebody doing an on ramp three and people doing on ramp one in the same on ramp. It gets super sloppy. So an ideal situation might be the first Monday, the first Monday of the month, the second Monday of the month, and then the second Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday of the month. So that way all three happen in a two week cycle. Please note that the schedule is gonna change based on staff availability. If I have a coach that leaves or I have a coach that doesn't have availability at a certain time, that 6.30 might change to 5.30. That 7.30 might change to seven, uh, up to coaches to communicate that. Um, note, 
uh, I got a note or a situation. So somebody says my schedule doesn't permit me to enroll in the group on ramp. I'm more comfortable with learning new moves on my own. Can I do a private? Absolutely. We can do private on ramps. Uh, we have the staffing for this. It's going to be a little bit inconvenient, but it should be fine. Ideally, uh, site manager needs to know that even though this might cost more, uh, the value of a client is over almost $2,000 if they sign up on a 12 month. So I'd rather take them out to Ruth Chris and be able to have sex every night for a year. Uh, here's the protocol during the success session. Uh, during the success session, the on ramp needs to be scheduled. They should leave out of there feeling confident and uh, prioritize that they know when they're coming so they can accommodate their sons and daughters in their schedule. So during the success session, the coach is going to look at the schedule above and book those out while the client is there. The client will go home saying, yes, William, I know that I'm meeting. Uh, please, important to note, coaches, that page three of the contract indicates uh, we need a 24-hour cancellation uh, reminder. So how that works is if Brit Brittany walks in the door and Nick is not there, we owe Brittany a free session. If Brittany walks in the or if Nick walks in the door and Brittany is not there, that counts against her. You need to let the let the clients know that if they miss their correct Monday, they have to wait until the next session. So I'm actually going to note that here. 20 for cancellation reminder. If client misses, they must uh, rebook at the next block, which is two weeks away. So we're going to put a little bit of heat on their back. If you tell them up front, it's not a big it's not a big situation on the back side of it when um, things get out of whack. Mark the success session in the KPI tracker um, if you are the salesman. Number three, site manager emails confirmation. Uh, so here's the confirmation email. You're going to send to coach, to office manager. The subject is the on-ramp, first name, last name, dear coach. You have an on-ramp schedule for the following, this, that, and the other. Uh, in the realistic world, site manager may forget to do this. That's why MindBody sends an automated email. However, uh, site manager needs to clearly communicate that the coach needs to acknowledge that this is a class and send to the office manager. So if there's a situation where back pay keeps happening, uh, it will be mandatory for site manager to see this unless he can convey the autonomy of the coaches to do it themselves. Uh, other than that, guys, that is how the on-ramp scheduling works. Again, note that days days and times may change based on coaches' availability. But as far as the system, the system will never be broken. Only other thing that we might change is the actual things that they may be doing in the two on-ramps for sports performance or the three on-ramps for boot camp or CrossFit. Other than that, uh, this is the responsibility of the site manager. Or if the site manager can delegate somebody else to schedule, it's that person's responsibility and the reporting position is the owner. Or if the site manager finds somebody else to schedule, the reporting position will be the site manager. Thank you.